Welcome to the review of High Res Adventure Number 2, Adventure in Serenia. The game was created by Sierra Online and released in 1982 for the PC. It actually isn't for DOS, it is a PC bootloader. It was also released for quite a few other platforms, but I'm going to be reviewing the PC version. The plot of the story is King George's daughter, who is the princess, has been kidnapped by an evil wizard, and you need to find her and save her and bring her back. This is Sierra Online's first PC released game, so it predates their more popular King's Quest series. So as you can tell, it's pretty much a text adventure with some graphics splattered at the screen at the top. You do have the ability to switch color modes in the game, but it is CGA graphics, so there's only four colors at a time. However, because of the dithering in the game, it can give the illusion that there's quite a few more colors. You do actually have the ability to turn the graphics off. I'm not really sure what the purpose or benefit of that would be, but you can play the game with just the text. The game does utilize the PC speaker for sound, but is very limited. The graphics, although limited in color, are very charming. It does give the feel that you are adventuring in this mystical world of Serenia. And although there's no animation, as you interact with things on the screen, Sometimes the screen does refresh and will show you the various changes, such as picking up an item or using a rope. You can see the game's influence on the King's Quest series. You will run across quite a few characters in the game, such as a peddler, the giant, and some of the scenes really remind me of King's Quest. In fact, this reminds me of King's Quest 2 here, the bridge. Now the way you interact is using a text parser. So basically you put in commands, similar to King's Quest, and then the game interacts. Sometimes the commands are very straightforward, like talk to woman, and other times you have to figure out what type of special item to use that's in your inventory. For example, here we play a horn, and it lowers the gate to get into this castle. Most of the time you're just navigating screens by typing in the direction to go. Here we're in a castle maze. And sometimes you're just interacting with things on the screen. Here we look inside the hole of this cactus and we find a cracker inside. So you type simple commands like get cracker. And some items are very cliche in the game such as using the cracker on this parrot. This world does contain magic, so at times you have to use a few spells in order to complete the game. For example here, we save this snake who is trapped under a rock, and it teaches us a hiss spell. So sometimes the spells are pretty obscure and you have to figure out when to use them. Like here we found a code earlier that said Lucy. So you type Lucy and it lightens your load so you can cross this bridge. Quite bizarre. You will die in the game. There's several different hazards, but you are not giving the typical seer online death scenes. It just basically says you're dead, you want to play again. So I felt that was really missing in this game. You can save the game by pressing F3. And then normally you would have a floppy diskette at that point in 1982, and you'd probably save to blank floppy. But you can also save to the hard disk. And then, of course, you can restore the game by pressing F4. And at any point in the game, you can quit by typing quit. Strangely enough, it asks if you want to play again. If you say yes, it restarts the game. You will find some puzzles and cryptic messages in the game that you need to remember and utilize somewhere else. Here, for example, is that Lucy spell I was talking about earlier. 
There is a random hazard in the game, which is a rattlesnake that will appear out of nowhere in the desert. Usually you just leave the screen and then you're fine. But I did notice a little glitch here. It appeared on the screen, and I actually read a note, and then all of a sudden it appears on the note graphic. Whoops. Now this is definitely not a smart text parser. Not nearly as smart as the King's Quest series. In fact, I found it quite frustrating trying to get a command in. Here I'm trying to say kill the snake with a knife, and it says with what? So you have to type it a certain way, and then it tells you your knife's not big enough anyway. So you can use abbreviated commands such as S to go south or E to go east. So that's a nice touch because it saves some typing. But I did find for most of the game, I was wandering around aimlessly, not really having a clue what to do. And the reason is because of the look command. The look command is terrible in this game. It really doesn't describe anything on the screen like it does for the King's Quest series. Sometimes it will tell you some vague comments and other times it won't tell you a thing. Here we finally kill the snake by throw rock. But then when we try to look at the dead snake, it just says, you see nothing special. Or here we open this treasure chest and have a look inside. And it tells us that there's a small harp. But then when we look again, it says, you see nothing special. Sometimes when you go to use an item, you just say use item and you don't have to say what to use it on and it just works. Other times you do have to specify. And then sometimes if you try a command like look in hole, it won't work. But if you say look hole, it will. Just very frustrating. So here's another example. I was trying to tie a rope to an anchor and tie rope to anchor doesn't work. So I thought maybe I could put a dash in there and it says to what? So I say tie rope anchor and it says to what? So it still doesn't work. So finally I just say use rope on anchor and then it recognizes it. I will cut Sierra a little slack considering this was their first PC game. But I will also say that if you try to play a game like this in today's time, you will find it extremely frustrating and a waste of time. Whereas the King's Quest series, there actually is some charm to that and people that didn't experience it may want to play that today. The other thing is the graphics really doesn't jive with the text parser. Here it looks like there's a door to the north that we can go through, but really that's the exit. One other final gripe I have about the game is the text would pause indefinitely, and I figured out you finally have to hit the control key to get it to continue to display the text. And here's a little LOL moment for you. So I ate the bread and it says, wow! Okay, let's try the cracker. I know we have that. Wow! So in closing, what did I think of this game? Well, I do my grading based on when the game was released, which was 1982. There are quite a few cliche type situations in the game, which isn't too bad because this was the first Sierra Online PC release. So a lot of people haven't seen these cliches in a computer game yet. And it did kind of remind me of King's Quest, so that brought back some good memories. But once again, I wouldn't have known about King's Quest if I played in 1982. So I think if I would have played this game in 1982, not knowing about the other Sierra games, I would have liked it. It would have been challenging. And there really wasn't much like it for the PC. I did find some issues with the text parser where you could kind of cheat by typing something in before you knew about it, such as the hiss spell. So that drastically cuts into replay value of this game. Once you've completed it, really there's no reason to play again. In fact, there's no scoring system at all. So it would have led to a few months of entertainment, but then you'd probably put the game on the shelf and never play it again. So now I'm going to show you the ending to the game. So if you don't want a spoiler, please stop watching now. 
I hope you enjoyed this review, and I'll see you next time.